Hi, I'm Phil Nash, developer advocate for ReSharper C++, C Line, and the other C++ and native tools here at JetBrains. But before I came here, I worked for many years on large-scale code bases at banks and in other industries. My life would have been so much happier if I hadn't had them what I'm about to show you now. That's because one of the biggest issues in C++ these days is managing compile time dependencies. Until we get something like modules, which is years away yet, our only tool is the hash include directive, which is part of the C Pro processor, and of course only does text-based substitutions. The problem with that is that including a single file always brings in a lot more than just the dependency you wanted, including parts of its implementation, other orthogonal features, and sometimes an astonishing number of transitively included files. This can have a huge impact on build times, but can also make our code more brittle by exposing us to much more code that we don't strictly need. Name clashes, especially with macros, become a lot more likely. So there are a few ways to improve the manager situation, but all of them typically involve a lot of tedious manual work. For example, we should remove includes that we no longer need, or can be moved out of headers and into CPP files. Beyond that, we can do more intrusive work to reduce the surface area of our headers, for example, by adopting the pimpolidium in certain places. And finally, if we can identify the biggest dependency bottlenecks and put them into pre-compiled headers, if our platform supports them, we may be able to address some of the remaining build time effects. The ReSharper C++ has long had a feature that will highlight headers that are not needed. Although you do need to be careful that you don't actually depend on them, but they're transitively included by something else. But since the 2018.1 release, we now have a great new tool to help, the Includes Analyzer. This gives us much more insight into our include hierarchy and can help us track down the biggest culprits and either eliminate them or use one of the other mitigation strategies. So how does it work? Well, here we're looking at my catch2 code base and we can bring the tool up in a few ways. We'll do it here from the context menu and we'll see a new dockable panel with a list of all the files, including headers in the project. And we can look at these files in two ways, either from the list of includees, that's the files that are included by other files, or includers, the files that themselves include other files. Looking first at includers, we can see that we get some stats on these files. First, the includee count, that's the number of files transitively included by this file. And if you open those up, you'll see the direct inclusions, and then you can obviously draw all the way down. Then the line count is the number of lines just in this header file, whereas the line count inclusive is the number of lines in this and all of its transitive includes. Notice that some of the files will say already included, because although the hash include directive was found here, the file itself had already been included earlier in the compilation. So you'll see its contribution is zeroed out. That way you can see exactly which paths are causing the most files and lines to be included. But those numbers may shift around as you change things. Going to includees, this view is very similar, but now the first column is times included. So you can immediately see which files are being included the most and perhaps question why. And then you can drill into where these are being included. Notice that this file is included 44 times, but only via these five files. And most of those times are coming from the first file, which is itself included 41 times. And at each stage we can see the number of lines contributed, either directly or again, including the transitive count. So with all this insight, we can quickly see which files we need to concentrate our efforts on, whether it's by removing that one stray hash include to get a big reduction in the overall contribution, or putting the real dependencies in pre-compiled headers, or some other strategy. But in any case, you'll know that this time is well spent.